This is Leisha Holmes and I'm your host on the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast and I am absolutely thrilled that we didn't put off last time a wonderful guest that we had on our podcast previously. This is Steve Guest and I'm sure for many of you he won't need an introduction because Steve is also a podcast host of The Guest List. He's an author of two incredible books which I'll show you in a minute actually. He's the founder of Guest Consultancy and he's now also the founder of the Recruitment Mastery Programme in partnership with the REC. But for anyone that is somewhere across the globe that you're not yet familiar with, I hope I did you justice there Steve. Welcome back. To <laughs> you <too. laughs> Lovely to be back, lovely to see you again Leisha. It's always nice to see you and I think we actually we met for real didn't we? In 2020, we did face to face. We did. It was absolutely wonderful. It was just one of those days that you, you came about three days early. So which yeah, and we were working sure. much and we had the best day. We really did have a, a wonderful laugh, didn't we? And just putting the world to rights about recruitment. See, it's great sharing recruitment stories because I think there's so many and yeah. everything's relatable. Yeah, it really is. And you know, I think that's the great thing about your brand that you've created and amongst all the different things we're going to talk about today you're just very real and you talk about things that most recruiters at some point have either experienced or will experience regardless of a where you are listening to this in the world and b what sector you work in you know we all face the same challenges the same experiences I would say it never goes away either I mean just simply the fact that I still day-to-day recruit as well as doing all the other little bits in the background yeah. I had someone leave after three days last week. So even after 16 years of placing people, it still goes pear-shaped and you still have the excuses or things where it goes wrong. Yeah. Even when you feel you've got the best recruitment process and you work to it, it's just it's really, the nature of dealing with humans. <laughs> it is. And it's really interesting, actually, because I just had, I think I mentioned to you off camera that I interviewed Mitch Sullivan recently and he actually turned the tables on me and started interviewing me. And that was one of the things that we talked about that ultimately even, I mean, I've been in recruitment for 23 years now and counting and I'm still learning every single day because we're dealing with something that's intangible, which is human beings. So I do, I do, I think it's remarkable. And you know, the fact that you're sort of vulnerable enough to open up and say that that happened to you. I still have things that that don't go my way. I still make mistakes occasionally. So it's important that you own it and that you learn from it. And that's, you know, I'm really glad that we've used that as a starting point. Yeah, I say none of us are perfect in life in general. And then when it comes to work and everything else, it's I always see things as a journey and mm. I'm not frightened of falling on my face. I'm not frightened of things failing. And that takes a while to get used to and to, to I suppose, be comfortable. With. Yeah, um, because so many of us put up fronts of the fact that we've got that perfect social media lifestyle. Yeah, and we don't No, it's, it's interesting I think there's definitely that I think there's a there's a few little things that I think are happening in social media where I think we're almost going to see a total stark change and we'll look back in five years and I think 2022 will be the year where we may be sharing a little bit more openly and honestly and thinking twice before we put on a happy photo and actually be showing yeah. something a bit starker so I mean you are definitely someone who has excelled in social media not least with um, your books which you know this is a good opportunity time so obviously we've got your first one that came along was the top villa real life yeah. recruiter and then we've got the one that you launched in 2021 personal brand story so for anyone who hasn't yet read your books I mean if you were to summarize if it's feasible summarize what you think recruiters should be doing right now given that you still recruit so you're able to say this to excel in yeah. their markets I think for me, it always boils down to having a plan and some structure and, and putting a value on your own time so you focus on your own outputs and not perhaps somebody else's. Mm-hmm. I think we spend a lot of the time worrying about what ifs and outcomes and really just don't focus on the bits that we can control. Yeah. People ban that term around control the controllables, but actually if you just focus on X amount of CVs every day or X amount of calls, the bits that you can make a difference with, yeah. And make sure they're the really good calls and they're really good relevant CVs. Actually, the fees, the outcomes, and everything else take care of themselves. Yeah. And I think we get lost or we try and overcomplicate the process. Yeah. 
I, t- I totally agree with you. And that's why I am a huge believer that if you enjoy the process of recruitment, you will be successful because the actual process is conducting interviews, is taking briefs on and building client relationships, is prepping for interviews, taking interview feedback. The nitty gritty of our actual job is where yeah. the magic happens of how we influence. And that's why we can never be replaced by artificial intelligence or robots. Yeah. Because that's the, yeah. these are the touch points that mean we're influencing and we're engaging and we can either make things happen or, or not, as the case may be, as opposed to, I've got to make 20 grand this month. Forget that. Yeah. If you make, like you said, if you speak to five decision makers, get five interviews, get five jobs, yeah. whatever your metrics are, I'm just saying five because it's easy, you will make the yeah. 20 grand based on your ratio. Well, that's that's it. it. I think, in my experience, the, the recruiters that focus on the end goals and focus on the financial target or the fee they're going to get in from filling that position generally don't achieve it because they become fixated on the financial element of what they do. If you focus more on the service and the output, those sorts of things just happen anyway because it's the result of a good process. Yeah. Well, these are very wise words from someone that's been doing it, like you say, for a very long time. And you're the total opposite to me when it comes to being very orderly, very organized, whereas I'm definitely in the wing it camp. Although I think there must be an element of, I was so well-trained back in the nineties that maybe it's just an automated thing that I do every day. Cause I do still, when I take on any, any job brief in recruitment, I still follow the format that I took, that I was trained in by yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. Tra- but that shows there's an element of structure there. Yeah, there is structure really. I'm, I'm, and I think what you, what's happened over time is you've got used to the structure and you've yeah. made it your own. And it just structure. becomes how you conduct it. <laughs> no, it's true. There is an absolute structure. I'm being very facetious and I shouldn't be. So there while, we are. Yeah. while we're still on the books, um, as we record this in February 2022, um, you have just had 300 reviews on Amazon, which is remarkable. And I know that you're always in that top list. So what's next? Are you able to talk to us, give us an exclusive? Are there any more books coming out? Well, there is definitely book three in the thought process. Mm. What that'll actually be, I don't know. Okay. Um, I've got a few ideas in terms of perhaps journaling a 12-month recruitment mm. journey, yeah. the ups and downs and all the yeah. warts and all. Um, yeah. There's a few other thought processes I'm having. Mm. Uh, maybe an introduction to recruitment, how to deal yeah. with the first six months. Yeah. Um, I'll let the... I'll let the network decide really on what they perhaps need. I've got more a good one for you because I think a lot of people have probably sat listening to this because obviously, you know, we have a global reach who are thinking about setting up on their own. So you could do yeah. a book on how to set up on your own. I like yeah. the thought of doing a real, a, a date, like a diary version. I've often thought I should write a book, Steve. And I'll be honest with you, I was approached by a publisher about two years ago and I'm like, I haven't, maybe when I've got more time on my hands as I get older, but it's, yeah. I don't think it's in me, but I think you could have like a thought leadership book, you know, where you're interviewing all, all your different guests. Yeah. Putting it yeah, yeah. Format. Cause I think people like it's it. It's a good idea. People like a book. There you go. I could be your co-author. We could do one together. You heard it <laughs> first, guys. That's it. We could do one together. We do a collab. Ying, ying and yang. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we, I'm, I'm actually, let's talk about this off camera, everybody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One of the other reasons I wanted to invite you back on here, as well as the fact that you are, you know, you definitely seem as a thought leader. And I think you're just one of recruitment's nicest people. I really do mean that. I think there should be a guest in everybody's world. Um, you have recently become accredited by the REC with your recruitment mastery program. So talk to us about where that started, because I do remember <coughs> I think possibly being your first ever member in that group, uh, how, where it started and then how you've got here over the last two years. Talk to us about and what it is. Yeah, okay. So um, I'd spent 11 years working with a, a business up until 2019. And the idea, initial idea, was to just go back to doing day to day recruitment for six months and then get to that six month part and then consider going out and being perhaps a third party consultant to local recruiters, local recruitment businesses, helping out new startups. I think. So that six months was just as COVID hit. Um, so obviously it kind of changed my direction and thought process. Um, it was also at a time where there was lots of recruiters on furlough, lots of insecurities, lots of worries, lots of people not really knowing what they should do on any given day. Should they be doing a bit of BD? Should they be building a personal brand? All these thought processes. 
I put a post out on LinkedIn to say if anybody needs some help, support, wants a rant, needs a laugh, a cuddle, a cry, whatever it might be. Um, I'm going to clear out my diary next week, Monday to Friday. You can book in for a free 30-minute Zoom chat and we'll just put the worlds to right and see what we come up with. <clears throat> if I'm honest, I thought it'd be eight to ten people. It'd be ex-colleagues, friends, people just booking in for a bit of a laugh and a joke. Uh, it ended up being 62 recruiters. It was global. Wow. I had recruiters from Japan, China, Singapore, Switzerland, South Africa, New Zealand, Amazing. Uh, Australia, the US. It was crazy. And I didn't know a single individual out of that 62. So it was 30-minute Zoom calls of trying to find that initial interaction where you can get on with somebody from different cultures, different backgrounds. Um, and what I realised at the end of the week was where perhaps my thought process was about helping local um, recruiters. Actually, all the problems, all the hurdles, all the pain points, all the issues are the same wherever we sit and wherever we're based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I was sat there thinking, well, how can I perhaps create or do something that adds more value to more people. Mm. Um, and it was also at a time where the recruitment market stopped, construction had stopped. Yeah. My wife and I own our own business and we had to find a way of creating a revenue stream and some income. Mm. So the two parts there was how do I add value and create something that could potentially bring yeah. a bit of revenue into the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for about eight to 10 weeks, I sat in an office on my own in lockdown from about half six every morning till about eight at night um, and created what is now called the 12 week recruitment mastery program. It's 12 modules across 12 weeks, four to seven videos per module. And it breaks down everything from why you'd start and be a recruitment consultant, what keeps you motivated, what makes you get up in the morning to go into work to managing your mindset, motivation, dealing with rejection, all the, the kind of bits that surround the actual process. And then it breaks down all the elements of the process as well. Mm. Um, I think with me being the borderline OCD, spreadsheet savvy, copious note taker that I am, I've got 15, 16 years worth of notebooks of yeah. lessons, learnings, education, problems, things that we had to get through. Obviously, I'd got all the notes from the discussions as well, where I knew I could find solutions for the problems. Um, and that's what I basically set out um, to do. I'm sure you probably even saw some of the photos where I had all them whiteboards behind me on the walls with the pen, the red and black pen notes and writings and questions. And I wanted to create something that was accessible anywhere in the world. Yeah. That basically drip feeds really good information, good education and helps and supports people that um, just want to improve. Yeah. The initial idea was to empower the individual. I wanted that person that perhaps, I don't know, didn't quite feel like they fit in or they were sat in a room and they felt that there was more to their recruitment life than what was in that room. Yeah. And they needed to get outside of that space to find a bit of education or a bit of accountability. Um, so it kind of progressed. First launch, I think, was June 2020. So the partnership with the REC, the launch um, on this basis will be the fourth kind of cohort. And at the moment, it's scheduled for the 1st of March. Amazing. It's remarkable. I mean, just like I said at the start of that intro to this part, it's to see what started as something quite altruistic, really. You know, you knew that everybody was isolated. None of us had gone through anything like this. Even people that have worked through recessions, we'd never seen anything mm -hmm. like this. We were all forced to work from home. There would have been tens of thousands of people who were at the very start of their recruitment journeys. And I think seeing the sorts of comments, you know, this was just a safe space for people, you know, with or without their employer's consent, where they could come and say, look, what do I do? How do I do this? And people just openly sharing their yeah. advice and tips to what has clearly become something that you know the REC recognizes is something very valuable so how did that partnership come about with um with the REC um so off the back of the the training program which is it's basically an online platform that people get access to yeah 
there was lots of questions around that and there was questions and follow-ups in regards to the book and the program and various things I put on social media and I couldn't cope with all the questions if I'm honest mm. and I needed a space where I could direct a group of people where we could all be collaborative and <clears throat> people with more experience and knowledge than me could potentially answer questions which meant I wasn't answerable to everyone and I yeah. could yeah. at least ensure that people were finding the answers they needed when they needed them that's where the Facebook group came from yes um, and if I'm honest, when I first set that up, I was a little bit nervous because recruiters by general trend are the puff your chests out, big ego, big personality, flamboyant, I'm the best brilliant consultant here. I was worried that putting a load of recruiters in one space would just end up with um, people not necessarily getting on with each other and getting frustrated with comments or mm. posts. Um, and you know what? It's what are we on now? Nearly, I don't know. It'd be two years in October this year. I've only I've only ejected one person, <laughs> oh. and we're all a pretty well behaved bunch of That's recruiters. Remarkable. Were they in mm. No, I think they were just in there to um, take people out and take them somewhere else and oh, right. okay. pretty much do everything that I was doing in respect to the group. Oh, so well, it's cool. Good. I'm happy with that. If, yeah, if people are trying to yeah. take what you've done, then you must be doing something. You're doing, something of right. course it's because you're doing something right. Trojan horse, shame on you. Yeah. Good for you for a yeah, job. Yeah. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And I think, you know, the REC obviously are, are an incredible industry body that is recognised, you know, by everyone for, you know, creating excellence in recruiters, you know, right the way across skill set and sector mm. and, and how long you've been, you know, the tenure of a recruiter doesn't matter whether you've been doing it for six months or six years, you know, the REC is definitely a good destination. So to be accredited by that, you must have been so proud. Yeah, I'm really humbled, to be honest. And it came from one of the directors who rang me, who was a member of the Facebook group wow. and had followed the journey and the progression to then say, can we have a look at the program? Can we have a look at what you're doing? Um, they were looking to kind of revamp their offering in terms of what they put out there for their members. Brilliant. Um, and I think there's a few things that differentiate this program perhaps to others. Mm. The big points are it's, it's virtual and online. Yep. So it's accessible anywhere. It means that consultants don't have to spend days in a classroom. Because they can dip in and out when they need to. They can look at it at lunch, before yeah. work, after work. They can go back and revisit it. Yeah. Um, it means the consultants are more engaged because they're not in a classroom thinking, I need to be making sales calls. I'm never going to hit my target yeah. while I'm sat in here. Yeah. Um, and I think it offers something a little bit different. It helps to potentially differentiate the REC mm, in the market. Okay. Um, and I think it, for me anyway, it's refreshing to know that I still recruit I would want someone training me that does what I'm telling them to do or yeah. they're telling me to do yeah yeah I don't want someone that recruited in the 90s that hasn't made a cold call in the last 20 years no. to sit there and say go and call that client I'm like, no you <laughs> yeah. again I think it's just that's credibility isn't it and that's accessibility and that's mm. you know that shows that it, it you've made it a very sort of future-proof course by the fact that it is online because that's exactly how most people will learn now I think classroom-based learning for most people mm. now is not an attractive option for so many reasons apart from the you know the fact that people are in and out with COVID and you know who knows but we you know it's a globalized product now and service that's, and that's it and it, it gets bigger every day because any new content any group zoom conversations anything that comes out from the very initial start gets added back in so yeah. people that are joining now have almost two years worth of content Amazing. in addition to what was the original setup so it just keeps growing and yeah. for me it was always about adding value back in it's, it's about making sure people come out bigger stronger better uh, and and can improve and as long as that keeps happening then it's always got a place yeah and and I just think I was from a 
a position where I was managing up to 19 people across two regions. And I really miss that. I miss the fact that you're answerable and accountable to um, someone as much as they are to you. Yeah. The programme kind of gives you that back a little bit. And not only that, but you get to speak to other businesses. You get to speak to other recruiters from different backgrounds and cultures where they might not be able to do certain things. And you can come up with a solution that works. So it's, that, so it's accessible for people and they can share ideas. It's all the good things that you would do in person, but actually you've made it future-proof. There's no question about it. So what's next mm-hmm. for Steve Guest? I mean, you're going to have your hands full by the sounds of it for the future. Yeah. Third book on its way. If, I think. if I'm... If I'm honest, my immediate answer is a summer holiday. Yeah. <laughs> I need to lie on a beach in the sun That's with no cool. children harassing me. Um, Don't we all? would be the ideal. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 That's not going to happen. But <clears throat> um, I just, I suppose I just see where, where life takes me. At the moment, I've got so many little elements to what I do alongside the day job. You do? Yeah. Um, I'm quite content with where I'm at. As I say, probably the third book is next, but everything else is just continue to build the value, get the, the recruitment training program out there as much as possible and, and try and kind of big up the industry a little bit more, yeah. shake it up a little bit and show yeah. that we are actually genuine. Yeah. Definitely one of the champions. Yeah, more about the podcast, what's happening with the guest list? Well, yeah, podcast is is going going along really nicely. So that will be twelve months old come the end of March. Um, some absolutely amazing guests. Yeah. Um, I love doing the podcast on the basis that I get to spend a bit of time with some really cool people, really I'm knowledgeable feeling. people. They're feeling. Yeah, exactly. People that add real value, and from a selfish perspective, I learn every time I talk to someone. And then I put it out as a podcast and you, you get a bit of good feedback that comes with it. Thanks for sharing. Great interview with that person. And it's, it's the guests that make it. Yeah, of course it is. It's not about us. No, I agree. With you. I mean, I do yeah. listen to yours. Yours is one that I do actually listen to. Um, and I, agree. I always think that my intention, you know, I'm sure your intention was the same with the podcast, is if I can just educate one person and affect one person in a positive way, it was worth that yeah. half an hour or however long you've, the podcast was for. And I just see it as a total privilege to sit and chat to other leaders and talk on a personal level, you know, and it proves that we're all human. We all go through similar things. And sometimes yeah. it's down to skill. Sometimes it's down to luck. Sometimes it's down to tenure. But actually, it is. I just think it's the best way to communicate those messages because hearing yeah. some testimonies the, the most effective thing so i do hope you'll continue with the podcast that's what i wanted to say because i do actually think it's very yeah. well produced and i think it's one that people should definitely thank go you. and subscribe and download thank you Leisha. I, I say i do enjoy it um i say sometimes i struggle with a bit of content for the um the personal or solo episodes in between um but there's normally something that crops up that i think ah oh, <laughs> i'll talk about that for 10 minutes <laughs> The thing is, you've got so much experience. There's, you're never going to be stuck for something to talk about because to somebody that's new. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You know, you just think about what's that happened that true. day. You could talk about. It. That's why I always think about content on social media. There's so many things that happen in a day. What do you do to overcome it? Don't overthink it. Yeah. Just share. Yeah, it. Oh, I certainly don't do that. No. No, I'm sure you don't. Well, I'm so grateful that you took time to join us today because I know your schedule is beyond bonkers. So we'll make sure that. If you are not yet connected to Steve, please go and follow him. Download his podcast. It's definitely one that we definitely um, listen to. We really do listen to it. We're not just saying that. If you've not already read his books, get one on Amazon. The links are always there on Amazon. And uh, we look forward to seeing what the future holds. And, uh, you know, congratulations again on the REC partnership. Lovely to see you. on. Thank you, Alicia. I loved it. Absolute pleasure. Good pleasure.